What's up, beautiful people? Hey Welcome back to the podcast. We're so glad that you're here today. It's a pretty exciting day today, mainly because today, you're watching this on probably Friday, September 30th, I've just released a new song, like literally yeah. my first song in two years almost, which mm -hmm. I hadn't released a full album since 2019. It's been a while. It's been a while, guys. It's called First Love. And so um, just, should we, should we let them kind of hear it right now? You want to insert like a little clip here? A Let's just sneak peek. We're going we're gonna to drop it down right here on this podcast just for you guys to get the first listen. And then if you <laughs> want, after you're done, you can go listen on Spotify. You can listen on iTunes or Apple Music or wherever you listen to your music. While you're there, make sure you subscribe to this podcast. What's up, beautiful people? Everywhere your podcasts are, uh, you know, listened to. We would love for you to do that. We're here every Friday, although we may take a week off next week because it's fall break and we're headed to Ohio Yeah, because we've never been to Hocking Hills and it just looks glorious. Yeah. We have fall a colors are all. Special invitation to go out that way. It's going to be awesome. I think the kids are going to love it. It's the kids really are special. so pumped. So. so really excited. So enjoy right out the gate, this podcast yeah. gate, a sneak <laughs> peek of, well, it's not a sneak peek. You may have listened to it already, <laughs> but first love. Here you go. I'm coming back to my first love. I'm my favorite, my friend. You never stopped holding my heart in your head. I'm coming back to my first love I was blind, now I see As my first love first loved me You don't shut me, you don't shut me up and I go on my wayward path But you call me home And you run to me The first second that I turn back So I'm coming back To my first love I'm my favorite, my friend Start holding my heart in your hand And I'm coming back To my first love I was blind, now I see As my first love, first love You don't curse me, you don't cut me off When I fall for the lies in the dark You don't make me pay, cause you paid it all Bought my freedom, forgiveness, my heart So I'm coming to my first love
So today we are going to be talking about not taking shortcuts. This is like a extends sort of into all areas of life. For example, recording that song. There was no shortcut. I started writing that song mm. two years ago, literally two years ago, and just kind of sat on it and kept refining it and refining it. And I kept wanting to record it, but I was just like, I'm not really there yet. But what I didn't want to do is have this song that I spent all these resources on and then it, I just didn't love it at the end of the day, you know? Yeah. So... We just waited and waited and waited and waited and uh, finally got there. So I think, you know, that's one little, little example. But I actually wrote a whole chapter about this in my book, uh, The Art of Getting It Wrong, mm -hmm. which uh, has a few funny stories in there. Yeah, <laughs> we may have tried to take a few shortcuts in our time, especially you. I feel I'm like me. Yeah. you're so driven and it's like easy to kind of get yeah. caught up on wanting to arrive at your destination that yeah. you're like, eh, we'll just kind of do this little thing here and there <laughs> and get there a little quicker. But a lot of times that backfires. So. It does. I actually, um, you know, my dad used to always take the scenic route, but he would always say, this is the shortcut. <laughs> like we'd be like, where are we going? I'm taking a shortcut. And then it would be like five hours longer than, you know, it should have taken us to get somewhere. This is before you had maps on your phone. You had to like literally look at a map. So my mom would be like oh, having all these maps out in the front seat. There was no map quest that you could even print out. This is before the internet. Did you ever get lost? We did all the time. Like it would be wow. like, we would find ourselves at a dead end road and there's just like, you know, cattle gates and cattle guards everywhere. And my dad would <laughs> turn around and we'd go back. But what was great is that I remember so vividly the window down because he had a cigarette and we were listening to Crosby, Stills and Nash or Van Morrison or, you know, some great classic rock. Mm -hmm. You know, we, that's when I learned to love the king of country, Garth Brooks. He was like, <laughs> you know, the, every, everything. Like we just listened to so much music. I think I got my love for adventure and my love for music in a lot of ways from my dad. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm really grateful for that. Uh, that to say, you guys may have been tempted to take shortcuts in your life and it ended up being the long way around that's okay. It's okay if the short if you if you try to take a shortcut and it doesn't work out, there's always more time to have the wind in your hair and listen to some music or whatever. <laughs> For me, I think oftentimes I've learned from the shortcut a couple of things. Number one, uh, there are no shortcuts. Yeah. At <laughs> the know? end of the day, it's you're not really probably gonna save time and you're probably gonna have a lot more effort put into it yeah. because you usually have to kind of backtrack or fix yeah. some things, learn some hard <laughs> lessons. I learned, I started learning this when I was in middle school, really elementary school. We would do these school fundraisers, which by the way, now our kids are always coming home with these like fundraisers that they have to do. And I'm just like, why? <laughs> you know? What? Like, I do. I'm you like, what, what are time. we funding? But when I was There's a kid, a lot of good causes I, grew, out there. I grew up and it was the school fundraiser, man, every year. Mm -hmm. And there was this guy and he had a mustache and he had like a really nice jacket. And like he had this table of all these trinkets and toys and things. And, 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 and then all the stuff, like on, on table one, there was like, all these different wrapping papers and candles and whatever. And you've got to sell this stuff. And then under the, the black, you know, tablecloth of table two, he's got all the stuff that you could win. There was a Tootsie Roll piggy bank. <laughs> and I was, was like, the grand prize? I must have that. And, the, <laughs> you know, Mike Myers from uh, Wayne's World, I'm like, she will be mine. You know, they had like a little uh, Cowboys, Dallas Cowboys, little mini helmet and like hacky sacks and slap bracelets and all mm. kinds of stuff that you could win. But you were living in Oklahoma. I was living in Oklahoma, but okay. Oklahoma doesn't have a, it didn't have a professional team. The Dallas okay. Cowboys, it's America's team. Oh, okay. Although we live in Nashville. So the Titans mm -hmm. tighten up, mm -hmm. right? Um, anyway, all that to say the Tootsie Roll piggy bank was it for me. Right. So I go and my best, like my, I was obsessed with, um, you know, wanted to be like a real slick salesman. You know, we had all the little old ladies in our neighborhood. And so I went home that night and as fast as I could, I put on some nice pants and a little jacket and I slicked my hair back like Andy Garcia, 
uh, you know, who my mom was like obsessed with. And, Gosh. and I went door to door and I sold like, I can't remember. I, I actually did the math at one point for the book, but it was, you know, I, I sold a decent amount of stuff and then it hit me. Like I still have to sell like a ton if I'm going to win that piggy bank. Yeah. The, the, stuff it's it can be kind of crazy it can be it's really like, intense like it's like when you go to the arcade and you right. spend like six thousand dollars to win a twenty dollar super soaker right you exactly. know because you just got to get all those tickets it was like that it felt like this insurmountable yeah like thing i had like to do. sell 500 <laughs> things and you can win this little tootsie roll thing <laughs> so, so fast forward to the shortcut my principal calls me into the office and he says so steven tell me how do you know Michael Jordan? <laughs> How do you know Troy Aikman and Michael Jackson? And I'm like, oops. <laughs> uh, so, so I had this bright idea. I would take a shortcut. I was going to write out, um, you know, all these different people. So I, I started, I had all like one line one through 19 and it was all the little old ladies in our neighborhood and how many rolls of wrapping paper that they had bought. And so then I wrote, I started to write in Michael Jordan. Two rolls of wrapping paper. Mike Tyson. <laughs> yeah. I had all these. Troy Aikman. Garth Brooks. 14 rolls of, you know, all oh this my stuff. Gosh. And I didn't realize, though, that you actually have to collect the money. Right. Before you can get the prize. You thought you, you were going to get your. I thought they were going to get it. <laughs> and then be like, whoops, they canceled their order. Yeah. So you would have thought I would have learned my lesson. My my principal was just like, dude, you can't do that. But I think he kind of thought that was pretty funny. A couple of years later, we're do, we're selling world's finest chocolate, mm -hmm. which funny story. We were in L.A. this summer and there was a kid selling world's finest chocolate. So yeah. I bought the whole box from him just because it was so funny. It was really sweet. The look on the kid's face. We were coming out it's of like, Target no and all the kids were with us and we're walking to the car and this kid's standing here selling all these chocolate bars. And Steve was like, hey. I used to be that kid. I was you know? that kid. Yeah. Now, he just like, a Come disclaimer, here, it is not the world's finest chocolate. It is chocolate. not the world's <laughs> finest chocolate. But it was the, the, the matter. It was the principle of it all, right? So, and our kids were happy to have a whole box of chocolate. our kids were so chocolate. happy. Yeah. yeah. So I, I sold like a box full of these chocolate bars and, um, and then lost the money. Like, I don't know what happened to that money. I have no clue. But I went back and I got another box the next day and I started selling these chocolate bars that are clearly marked a dollar for two dollars, <laughs> which the funny thing about this kid was I asked him and I don't think it's just inflation. He was selling them for four dollars. <laughs> wow. I was like, well, I'll were just, they still marked as a dollar? Yeah, I don't I don't I don't think they were marked at all. Yeah. But I thought it was hilarious. I was like, bro, these were a dollar when I was a kid. Yeah, that's inflation <laughs> Either for way, you. I don't care. It was funny. So. My principal calls me back into the office and is like, Stephen, you're selling these clearly marked $1 chocolate bars for $2. You need to go give all the money back. So I'm like, Ugh. so I go and I give the money back to everybody who's bought them that I can find anyway. I sold them in the Walmart parking lot a lot. Mm. Um, but then I had to go back, take the long way around. I had to mow like six lawns mm -hmm. to make back the money that I had lost felt like billy uncle billy from from uh oh, it's a wonderful life you that's know? like the most heart-wrenching <laughs> scene so of any movie because you're like no it's in the hands of the bad guy yeah, now <laughs> yeah i'm sure somebody stole it from me and yeah. that i end up any either way like these are just funny things like as a kid i started to kind of recognize like oh yeah I, I i don't think you can necessarily like take a shortcut like whenever you do something you have to kind of take responsibility for it and not just work smart, but also work hard and just trust the system, trust the process, trust, you know, the life that you have to like live. Yeah. And the good news is you learned that lesson. And as an adult, you've never, ever struggled with it. Right. You've never, never done anything one time as an adult. struggled with it. <laughs> so, uh, I think I would say, um, more than any other thing in my life that I have struggled with shortcuts with, it's weight loss. Hmm. You know, I, I, I think I, a lot of people can relate to that because there yeah. are so many um, 
promises of shortcuts, right? Yeah. People that come along and say, you know, this diet or this fat or different things, yeah. like it's the the silver bullet and it's going to yeah. be the thing that's going to to get you there. And I've got some tried quite a few from Jenny. Jenny's our producer. She's brilliant. And she's also about to have a baby soon. So she's like, oh, we're so happy for them. It. Um, but she gave me some stats. According to Boston Medical Center, an estimated 45 million Americans go on a diet each year. And Americans spend roughly $33 billion each year on weight loss products. According to a study in the UK, you're more likely to drop pounds if your wife or girlfriend is also making healthy changes with you. Researchers tracked couples for four years and found that when one person lost weight, the partner was three times more likely to follow suit than in pairs where the significant other stayed the same weight. Experts suggest teaming up with friends, family, or even coworkers for your weight loss journey if you don't have a spouse for, uh, for a similar level of support. Mm. So specifically, we were kind of trying to do some research on like how we as a married couple, uh, because when we met, I was very overweight. I was 300 pounds in high school. Uh, so I was like 5'3", 300 pounds. You could like like a like violet, you know. Like, but you weren't, when I met you, you had already gone through your growth spurt. You were 5'11". I, I, I had grown up a little bit, but I was still pretty, pretty large. I was still 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. But that year that we, that we graduated, I found out about the Atkins diet. Mm. and that was your um, first diet you went on huh and i lost 100 pounds and really over that next little while i had got down to 185 and so then really for the entirety of our marriage i would yo-yo back and forth back and forth up 30 pounds down 20 pounds up 30 pounds down 15 pounds up 30 pounds and so then when we brought our kiddos home from china it was just a combination of stress and inability to have time for yourself yeah too. this time yeah. i think you know when i when i lost all the weight i had i was going to the gym like four hours a day i hadn't eaten a carb in a year like it was not a you healthy very dedicated or sustainable type way to go about it. very dedicated right. but i've been dedicated with the workout thing i think right. the eating has been harder so we get the kids have been home for you know about a year at this point wasn't and it I'm still like, in dallas though I think they had been home like when I started doing the magic bullet. Yeah, the the shortcut that I'm thinking of was. I think it was San Antonio. It, it, so, okay. I I uh, I got back up to 275, and I was like, "There's no way." Well, I heard this shortcut <laughs> that you could take to lose weight. That uh, coconut oil was supposed to be this magic bullet, and that if you would take it. How you much? would lose all the weight. <laughs> How much were you supposed to take? So you were supposed to take like what a a, a tablespoon? Probably a tablespoon in your coffee, mm -hmm. eh, like one time a day or something like that. Mm -hmm. Well, I was just like, well. Whatever, and I just squirt <laughs> like, so if much. One in. tablespoon I was works. Like, well, how much? I'll do seven. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and so then I would do. <laughs> I remember watching you like you do the first time, and I was like. I don't know if that's a good idea. And you're like, oh, no, no. I've read this whole magazine got... article on it. Like, <laughs> you know, this totally is going to work. <laughs> so I spent the majority of that next few weeks in the bathroom. <laughs> and I think that I did lose some weight, but not the kind of weight you want to lose. <laughs> and y'all were just laughing at me, you know. Well, because you did it a few times. Like the first time you're like, man, that really messed with my stomach. And we're like, yeah, we should probably not do that. And you're like. No, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to try it again. We'll, we'll just see, you know, <laughs> and, uh, the girls and I were just like kind of baffled, but and it was pretty comical too, because sure enough, like maybe 20 times a day yeah. you were in the restroom and we we're like, this is, this is bad. Yeah. Like, Let's take a quick break to thank our sponsors for this week's podcast, ZocDoc. ZocDoc's been our go-to recently. With the kids, we want to make sure we're getting them the best care when they need it. That's right. And sometimes it's tricky to find times that work for both of us and the doctor. But ZocDoc makes it really easy to find quality doctors in your network and in your neighborhood. Plus, with real, verified patient reviews, you can find the right doctor for you and one that actually remembers your name. With ZocDoc, booking an appointment with a doctor that suits your needs, fits your schedule, and is in your network is so easy. All you do is go to ZocDoc.com, find the doctor that is right for you, and book an appointment, in person or remotely, and one that works with your schedule. So, go to ZocDoc.com slash MillerFam and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then start your search on a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours, and that is Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash MillerFam. That's ZocDoc 
dot com slash millerfam our next partner has a product that i use literally every day i started taking ag1 because as a mom of seven kids we need to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves every day seriously we made it a habit to just start every day with ag1 and that's made such a huge difference because you know that every scoop of ag1 gives you 75 high quality vitamins minerals whole food sourced ingredients probiotics and adaptogens which is a fun word to say to help you start your day right and it's been really great especially with us on the move And we've been trying to stay on top of it, especially with the holidays and unfortunately all the colds that come our way. We're huge fans and I actually really like the taste, which is saying a lot. Plus it supports better sleep quality and recovery. Right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one year supply of immune supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is go to athleticgreens.com slash W-U-B-P. Again, that's athleticgreens.com slash W-U-B-P to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance and now back to our podcast so then we move here to nashville and i'm just like i'm, I'm basically as big as i've been since i had lost the weight because I, I did lose some weight but then i gained some back as i can do so i was like man i'm like like we need to get a hold of this i need to get a hold of this and babe i need you to support me and so uh, you really became just this massive support system for me. We kind of, for different reasons, especially I think as you get older and you have kids and your body kind of starts slowing down and you start seeing health issues and mm-hmm. your back's aching and, you know, everything hurts. Yeah. And it's it's not a great feeling when you yeah. start to realize like, hey, like this is my one body and I, mm-hmm. I need to take care of it. And so for me, for years, I was, I, I was underweight when I was younger and then kind of as I had kids kind of leveled into a, um, just kind of average weight. But like I when, al- have always, what, what are you going to say? I was just thinking about Dr. Asfori who delivered Reese. Yeah. When Amanda was pregnant with three, she was not, you were 98 pounds. I was 98 pounds when we got married. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and the doctor would be like, young lady, you need to put on weight. You need to eat milkshakes. So he she did. would eat all these milkshakes. He said, you can drink some milkshakes, <laughs> which is probably, that's not, there are way healthier ways to, <laughs> to put on some weight than milkshakes. But I was very happy to have a milkshake. At but I point. would say we, as we were kind of getting ready for this, I didn't realize how much my own weight insecurities, uh, like sort of skinny shamed you a little bit. Like I would say things like, it's not fair. Like I can't even eat a carb and you get to have milkshakes. And, and I think in a lot of ways, when we talk about spousal support, like I wasn't supporting you because I couldn't see beyond my own insecurities. You know I think I mean? we both just came at it from very different perspectives because we had different journeys and we had different issues that we were trying to tackle. And the big one for me is that I've always had chronic health problems in various ways. Mm-hmm. And um, so that's been this whole long journey of trying to get well, trying to find answers, um, trying to live a healthy lifestyle. And we'd go through seasons where we'd be eating really healthy mm-hmm. and really great support systems for each other. Um, because so much of your health does come from your diet and yeah. what are you eating? If you're eating junk, you're going to feel like junk, you know? Yeah. And so we have then, seasons that were great and seasons where we kind of fell off the bandwagon. Um, and it didn't matter because I would be in the gym. I mean, I've literally gone to the gym every day since high school, essentially, mm-hmm. but you can't outwork a bad diet, you know? Yeah. And so I remember whenever I was on Atkins, the doctor would, was like, hey, bro, like your triglycerides levels are through the roof. Do you like, are you just drinking bacon grease? Like what's going on? Hmm. I'd be like, well, I do eat a lot of bacon and cheese. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because you can eat as much cheese and bacon and whatever that you want, as long as you're not having sugar and carbs. And, and I just had all these like other health deficiencies. You right. Know? So we get here to Nashville and I find this guy, Craig, who is owns this boxing gym that I go to. He's like a bodybuilder. He's been on like magazine covers and all kinds of stuff. And I just said, dude, I want to look like Thor, <laughs> not like dad bod Thor, but like Thor bod Thor. And he's <laughs> like, well, it's going to take some dedication and 
you're going to fall off the wagon. And, you know, <coughs> it's important that when you do fall off the wagon, you don't just like let one cheat meal or one cheat day turn into a cheat week, which turns into a cheat month, which turns into a cheat year. When you mess up, um, you know, get back on and keep going. There are no shortcuts. It's not a quick fix. You can't just take a shot of coconut oil and call it done. Like mm -hmm. this is a long lifestyle change process and there's not a fad diet. There's not a, it's just, you're going to need to learn to take care of your body. And I think that was really the first time mm -hmm. where you and I were able to actually sync up yeah. to support each other because for our entire marriage, which will be 20 years this year, yeah. Um, and all of our dating and all that, I just couldn't eat carbs. You know, it didn't matter. She could make, you know, a delicious meal with some nice potatoes or carrots or whatever, and I would just not eat, you know. And so then it becomes sort of this disconnect, whereas now we have this kind of like common diet where we can get all the nutrients that we need yeah. and support each other. I think that was a big shift in your mind, especially kind of talking mm -hmm. with your trainer and going through that is realizing um, anything that's like to the extreme is usually not going to be good for you, mm -hmm. regardless of like the mental gymnastics that you go through. Like you did keto for a long time as well. And yeah. there can be some really great benefits to keto. Our mm -hmm. youngest son, Lincoln, has been on keto for um, his seizures, which is it, that can be really helpful mm -hmm. um, in brain support, especially if you're doing it the right way, because you can do keto in a really unhealthy way, but you mm -hmm. can do keto where there's a lot of fresh vegetables mm -hmm. and nutrients and good fats and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's just been the big realization for us is that going about things in a very holistic manner, yeah. a very well balanced manner is usually going to be the best, best for your body, best for your yeah. mind, best for your soul. And so I think that that's been really good for us. It's taken a, a quite a while for us to kind of mm -hmm. both get there, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's not that we've have all the answers or anything, but I think that we are in a good spot where we're able to pursue holistic wellness yeah. together. And I think that one of the ways that you know we talk about love languages. Um, for me, gift giving has been one of those ways that I've been able to show you that I love you. Words of encouragement is a big one for me mm -hmm. um, that you show. But what that's looked like over the years is whenever I want to make Amanda happy and feel loved, I will bring you ice cream or I will bring mm -hmm. you chocolate or I will bring you something that I know you love. And we've had to make a shift on what that looks like. Yeah. For us. Because I'm like, I'm not eating sugar right yeah, now. You know, yeah, it's it's harder when you're trying to eat healthy and less processed and yeah. so you have to have like good a good system in place mm -hmm. and so we've ac actually had to co have conversations where i say like okay if you want to surprise me with something just don't bring home ice cream because i'm really <laughs> trying to avoid it or at least like check in you know yeah. that kind of thing um but finding other healthy ways to connect yeah. and to show each other love um which and, is a shift because i think you used to do whenever you felt also that when you would give me chocolate or whatever, that that was going to make me happy. And I just remember how stressed I would feel sometimes to be like, I can't eat this, but it's going to like hurt her feelings, you know, if I yeah, don't. Yeah, earlier on. And so then you, I remember still, you came home, you bought me this Papa Bear mug and, uh, and you gave me that. And I was like, Oh, I feel like I still think about it to, th to this day. It's like my favorite thing you've ever given me, I think. And I don't think um, that was even for like, I think it was, it was just, just random. Just because it was just random. It was not surprise. connected to anything, which is what yeah. made it so special. So I think about that like thoughtful ways, not to just go to that like easy, tried and true, tested, kid tested, mother approved, like, you know, gift of ice cream. Mm -hmm. But like, what can I be thinking about truly who she is? What her, what are her goals? What are her passions? How can I make her feel loved? And honestly, I think a lot more, um, than giving gifts now, it's putting the onus on me to make time to give you a massage, which mm -hmm. decreases the cortisol in her body and helps her to relax and gives her a, a better ability to have a holistic health in her body and in her mind, or to tell her that she looks beautiful or that what she just made for dinner was delicious, or give you like, words of affirmation that... Yeah. 
I think for both of us, like showing up and being present. And I think that's true, not just when you're talking about, like we've been talking about weight loss and mm-hmm. that kind of thing, but there's no shortcuts in your relationship either. Yeah. And so what does that look like to not take shortcuts in your relationship? Cause you can get into that rut where you're like, okay, I know what they like, or I know what works or, mm-hmm. you know, I know how to kind of invest and show up into this marriage, but really being intentional, mm-hmm. um, is, is very important. And that's, yeah. you know, that's how you don't take shortcuts is by being thoughtful and being intentional and showing up and saying like, what do I need to bring to this relationship mm-hmm. now? Not maybe when we first got started, you know, but now what do we need? Cause we've changed and we've evolved and we're more health conscious and we've learned a lot along the way. And mm-hmm. so, um, yeah, I think that the intentionality aspect, I think we say this in most of our podcasts, you know, because I think that's the main thing that we are learning in this season yeah. is that intentionality is so important. You, if yeah. you don't, if you're not intentional about the way that you show up, life is just going to carry you along and mm-hmm. you are not going to be able to, you're probably not going to hit that goal or go the direction that you ultimately do want to go mm-hmm. unless you are really intentional. Yeah. So. And on that note, I mean, I think some of that is knowing what your spouse's needs are. And like for me, just bringing it back into the weight loss thing, but not just weight loss. Like for me, it's a holistic, like mental health thing. The fact that you give me a couple hours every day to go to the gym and you support me in that way, I think a lot early on in our marriage and really even up to a couple of years ago, I felt guilty about taking the time that I needed at the gym. Um, but then when I didn't go, and we've talked about this, I kind of am a different person. And it's not because I like love to work out. It's just that <laughs> I can't get over the... Uh, the mental hurdle of feeling like I didn't do this one thing that I kind of have that I have to do to take care of this body that lets me take care of my family. Right. You got to take care of your, of yourself too. Yeah. And so I think one of the best ways that you've supported me is by allowing me that time to go, whether it's by myself or go with me sometimes. And you do that. And I love it when you go with me, Mm -hmm. um, to be able to work out. And to have that rhythm and to have that way of building into my own strength. I feel like I'm stronger today, like physically, but also mentally and emotionally stronger because I do have that time to kind of just listen to a, a, an audio book or uh, listen to worship music and not have the distraction. I get to start my day out in a very focused way yeah. that sort of sets the tone for the whole day, mm-hmm. um, which helps me to give you the best version of myself. Yep. Um, and I think one of the ways that you can correct me if I'm wrong, but that I've tried to support you is by when you have some sort of physical activity that you want to do that would help you feel better, mm-hmm. try to encourage you to do that rather than to force you to fit into the mold of what I do. Yeah. Does that make sense? Right. Cause we show up in different ways, but I think just being a support system for each other Like you're really great about that too, helping out with the kids or, you know, taking care of the house, taking care of cooking a lot of the times, you know, like uh, I think that you do a really great job with that. And that's been such a huge blessing. So all that to say, when you come boxing with me, (laughs) that's hot. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It is pretty fun. It is fun. Like watching you hit the bag and it's been a while. Yeah. yeah, I haven't been in a while, but it is fun. (laughs) Well. I think that's that's pretty cool. And then also just I think this past year, really year, you've you've always cooked some, but like this past year, I feel like your cooking has just like shot through the roof on tasty deliciousness. I've that's become more also adventurous healthy. in the kitchen for sure. Yeah. I feel like you've made it a goal to like find ways to eat healthy that also tastes good. Yeah. Which There's is a huge, lot of great inspiration me, the out too. there. Yeah, I think just finding some, um, we found some really great sources of inspiration, especially on like Instagram. There's some really great accounts. Yeah, that do cookie cook that do healthy cooking. <laughs> healthy cookies. I'm thinking about cookies, guys. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but that do healthy cooking, yeah. and you can make it easy. And the instant pot has become my best friend. Like it's just so easy to just throw a bunch of healthy ingredients in there. She made this buffalo chicken soup last night. It was so (sighs) good because we love buffalo chicken dip. 
And <sighs> this was really good, but it was very healthy. It had Super chicken healthy. broth and it had um, carrots and celery, which yeah. was kind of a little bit of a twist. But if you think about it, like when those you, usually come on the side if you're doing like up. buffalo wings or that kind of thing. Yeah. It was really good. It I was. loved it. I, I thought personally, obviously, if you guys don't know this about me, buffalo wings is my favorite food. Like I could eat them every meal, every day for the rest of my life, <laughs> for the rest of my life. And uh, so to have it in soup form where it's not fried and loaded down with ranch dressing and all the stuff that makes buffalo wings unhealthy sometimes. Um, it was really good. Delightful. All the kids had two bowls. They did. I did Especially too. Lincoln. He was I had like. had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> did you really? I did. I came, oh home, my gosh. I came home from the gym and I was like, oh, protein. So I just like <laughs> ate all the chicken out of it. Yeah, there was a lot of chicken in it. <laughs> there was it was so much good. Chicken. It was awesome. So that's one of the ways too, I think that we can support each other is, you know, eating healthy does not have to be gross or boring or, or expensive. I think that soup was probably the chicken was the most expensive part. Mm -hmm. It was maybe twenty five dollars, thirty five dollars, maybe. Yeah, which to for make a it, huge which family, for a family is, of nine, it's pretty good. That's good. Yeah. That's a good like per person, mm -hmm. average cost. Yep. You know, so you can find ways to make cooking, meal prepping, whatever, uh, cost effective and delicious. Yep. Which I think is really good. And then also, you've always been so good at giving me words of words of affirmation <laughs> words of affirmation words of affirmation <laughs> i think we're both like, getting tired our mouths are getting tired when you go to give me a hug and you say oh you're so skinny now and <laughs> i can put my arms all the way around you you know that's not how you sound at all <laughs> i i hope i don't sound that way but my heart i'm sure grows like four sizes whenever you say that and it like explodes the little magnifying glass like the grinch because i a, love the hug. I love the physical touch. Mm -hmm. I love you loving to give the physical touch. And then, and then the words of affirmation that like you're doing so well. Whether or not that's what you mean to say, I feel like that's I, what you're yeah. meaning. I, I think being able to recognize like, hey, you're working really hard and I can see the effort and I can see how – seriously you're taking this and you mm -hmm. want to be healthy for yourself and for your family i think it's yeah. important that we speak that out to our loved ones we can see we can see that they're trying whether they're doing really well or maybe they're struggling to be able yeah. to speak that affirmation over them you're doing well you're doing a great job i can see that you're really trying it's yeah. gonna be okay you know all of that yeah and I, I will say this because sometimes i see on um social media when people are told wow, great job on the weight loss. You look great or whatever. And it like offends them or hurts their feelings or something. I don't, I don't personally identify with that. I feel like it's fuel for me that like helps me to uh, experience that, you know, in a way that gives me life, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think, for, I think what you were talking about, like some people feel like they only get that affirmation if it's regarding like, They've lost weight and they look great now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I would say that like if you feel like there's a lack of affirmation in other areas of your life, maybe you feel sensitive to that yeah. because it's like, hey, I'm this whole person, you know, right. and there's so much more to me than just the appearance. But the appearance is one part of that. It's it's important that you take care of your body. It's important that you're healthy for your family, for yourself. Yeah. Um, but that is just one of many different things. And so, I, you know, I want to be able to be affirming all of you, not just, not just you losing weight, but I think that is a big part because I, yeah. I can see the effort that you put into it. So, well, it means a lot to me yeah. and I know for you, it's so much, it's so important that I, uh, compliment you on a variety of things that are not just your looks. Yeah. Right. Because Women, yeah. I think as a, as a man, mm. that's sort of like the go-to, you know, Sure. but whenever I see you working hard or when I see you being a great mom or when I see you um, being a great friend to somebody or being so compassionate, like this isn't to toot her horn or to try to like brag or whatever, but like we were at a grocery store the other day and there was a young woman and she um, needed some help, you know, and Amanda, as she often does, um, it, you know, got out and she had a little bit of cash and gave the money to the young lady and prayed with her and like, those kinds of things for me, I'm just like, 
that's the dadgum woman I married. Like this mm. compassionate, empathetic, like loving, like truly loving person that you are. And to see the way that you shepherd our, our kids and encourage them and love them. And like those kinds of things also, I think uh, they're just, it's such an integral part of like our our family that I want to like shower you with the compliments. And sometimes I'm so busy that I don't. Um, but anyway, that, that too, I think there's just like a, a little bit of like pride in my heart that it's completely tangential and maybe has <laughs> nothing to do with this topic, but I just started thinking about it. So that's sweet though. I, I appreciate that. Babe. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I do think there are a whole, whole lot of things in our life, whether it's your career uh, whether it's um, shortcutting the process on like friendships and you, you know, or, or your relationships, like sometimes you settle for uh, Mr. Right now because it's too hard to wait for Mr. Right. You know, if you're, if you're young and single and you're kind of wanting to that, that there's a million things we, we, we trade great we're good enough. We do all these things because we, we would rather, I want what I want and I want what I want right now, you know? And so, um, I would just say, you know, it's okay to take your time. It's okay yeah. to pay your dues. It's okay to go slow. It's okay to work really, really hard and really, really smart. We always tell our kids, if you want to succeed, Show up every day, be consistent, be the hardest worker in the room and be humble, you know? And like, if you can do those things, you'll get there and you don't need to feel like you need to take a shortcut um, yep. to be able to do it. Um, Cause frankly, in almost everything in life, when you try to take a shortcut, you'll end up taking the long way around. Yeah. So. Not really worth it in the end. Not worth it in the end at all. Yeah. So. Anyway, I think that's pretty much it for the episode today. Real simple. We do have a little beautiful mm -hmm. people segment. We do. Uh, which, man, like this one. Uh, this is a really sweet story. Uh, Goodness. Uh, I was totally going to cry. Hearing it. <laughs> There's a video that's making its rounds on Instagram right now of uh, this classroom of kids and uh, an earthquake hits and um, one of the kids in the classroom, like literally all the kids run out as fast as they can. But there's one kid who has a broken leg and he has a cast on, he can't run. And so this other kid picks him up and carries him to safety, Yeah, which just feels like, wow, like that's a hero. Number yeah. one, that's Amazing. selfless. I don't know. I mean, it just shows that, you know, there are good people. Those. What's the Mister Rogers quote? Just look for the helpers. That, oh yeah. You know. In in times of crisis, when everything is so scary, and you don't know what to think, and you don't know how you're feeling, but you can always look and find the helpers. Yeah. The people that are doing good, that are making a difference, that are showing up, and that inspires you to also want to be that way. I yeah. think that's amazing that that kid was so brave and kind and thoughtful and selfless, and yeah. that's what I want to be. That's what I. Want to teach our children to be yeah. like, and I'm just really proud of that. <laughs> We're going to drop that in the show notes. Like we do everything, we'll have a link mm -hmm. to the song First Love that we let you guys check out at the beginning of the episode. We'll have a link to this book, The Art mm -hmm. of Getting It Wrong. The book. Uh, the book. It's been four months almost yep. since this book came out. And it is so cool. I just, I keep getting um, all these fun reviews on Amazon. If you have the book and you haven't had a chance to review it yet, um, I really, would love for you to do that, whether you do it on Amazon or on Goodreads or whatever. But this one, I saw this today because it just came in. 10 out of 10. <laughs> love the book and insight of Stephen Miller. I read The Art of Getting It Wrong in a Day. Couldn't put it down. 10 out of 10 stars for sure. Aww. 
And then there was another one that, from a guy named Billy that says, can I give more stars? Oh, that's really sweet. <laughs> My favorite book I've ever read. Uh, so Aww. it's just, you know, you talk about words of encouragement, words of affirmation. You can leave yeah. a review if you don't like the book. I'd appreciate it if you didn't. But if you did, <laughs> <laughs> you know, leave a great review. It would be amazing and it would encourage us. And uh, yep. if you haven't had a chance to get the book, we'd really be grateful for that as well. But. Um, mm -hmm. And if you haven't subscribed to this podcast, make sure you do that. We said at the beginning of the episode, we're going to bookend this whole thing just so that you know to do that. We would love for you to be, uh, you know, a subscriber. It just helps us to keep doing what we're doing. And also drop a comment if you're watching this on YouTube uh, with who you'd love to see us interview, maybe some topics that you'd like to see us talk about. Yeah. Um, we're always looking definitely for cool stuff to talk about and uh if you don't if you're if you're listening to this on spotify or apple podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts you can always just send us a dm uh slide into our dms <laughs> on the instagrams at the miller fam and uh, we'd love to hear from you there as well so that's yeah pretty much it thanks so much for listening guys thank you guys love you love you see you next time bye bye